Greetings Applied Calculators. In this screencast, we turn the tables. Oh, how the turn tables. Uh, we start looking at integration. And to talk about integration, we have to talk about this thing called an antiderivative. And an antiderivative is exactly what you think it is, right? So, so let's define it in the following way. If capital F prime of X is little f of X, then capital F is an antiderivative of little f. And these choices of variables are intentional. Uh, when you get to this point in a calculus course, the function itself is little f, and its antiderivative tends to be capital F. Uh, capital F tends to be the antiderivative of little f. Little f is the derivative of capital F, and that's the way this usually goes. So uh, let's find antiderivatives for. Uh, let's find antiderivatives for 3x squared, for e to the x, for 1 over x. Take a moment, think them through. Not too long. Answers coming in five. Okay, so uh, you might have said x cubed here. You might have said x cubed plus 2 here. You might have said x cubed minus 1 here. Those are all antiderivatives. Uh, you might have said e to the x here. You might have said e to the x plus 3 here. You might have said e to the x minus 4 here. Any of those are antiderivatives of e to the x. And you might have said natural log x here. You might have said natural log x plus 2021 20, here. You might have said natural log x minus 2020 20 over here. Any of those are antiderivatives of 1 over x because the derivative of any of those is 1 over x. What's the broad principle? Well, the broad principle is that these numbers that we add on at the end or subtract out at the end don't change the derivative. They're just vertical shifts of the function, so they don't change the slope. And so we can codify this by talking about a thing called the indefinite integral. It's indefinite for reasons that will become clear, but not today. This is the symbol for an integral. It is red, the integral of. Uh, we take the integral of some function f of x, and there's this dx thing that's here. And it's here because it's really a delta x, and it's a delta x because we're really adding up rectangles, but we can't talk about that yet. I'll have to explain that at another point. This is the integral of f of x dx. So when you see an integral and a dx, the thing in between is the function we're interested in. The thing between the integral symbol and the dx, that's the thing we're interested in. When you see this indefinite integral, you just write down capital F of x plus a constant. Uh, literally, you write plus C. You don't make up a constant. You literally write plus C. And what that does is it describes a family of functions whose derivative is little f of x. It is a family of antiderivatives. And so we might well ask to find the following. Uh, example two, find the integral of 2x cubed dx, or the integral of 6 over x to the fourth dx, uh, or and we should think about those for a moment. What's the integral of 2x cubed? Well, the integral of 2x cubed is some family of functions. There's plus a c there. 
but what's going to give us a derivative of 2x cubed? Well, to have an x cubed, your antiderivative has to have an x to the fourth. And then, then this 4, when we check by taking a derivative, this 4 would come down in front, and the 4 would have to multiply by something to give this 2. Well, that's a 1 half. 4 times the 1 half is this 2 sitting here. So this is the indefinite integral of 2x cubed dx. Similarly, uh, this is, I'm not going to do the integral just yet, I'm just going to write this in the way you're going to want to think about it. That's an over x to the fourth, so that's an x to the negative four. So what's going to give us an x to the negative four in the derivative? Well, it would have to have an x to the negative three there, right? because then you decrease the power by one, you end up here, right? So this negative three is going to have to multiply by something to give you six, and that something is negative two. And then we, we say plus a constant. Uh, this brings us to what is normally called the power rule for indefinite integrals, the integral of x to the n dx. Well, to have an x to the n, your antiderivative is going to have one power bigger than that. But then the n plus 1 has to multiply by something, and in this case, cancel out. So the way we think about this, we increase the power by 1 and divide by that power. We increase 3 by 1 to get 4 and divide by 4. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. We increase the power by 1 and divide by that new power. 6 divided by negative 3 is this negative 2. Um, staying on this theme, I should note This cannot be done with any kind of quotient rule. There is no quotient rule for integrals. But a little bit of fancy algebra tells us that we've got a plus sign over a single denominator. So this is the same as that. And algebra is sneaky this way. x cubed over x squared, that's just x. And this is x to the negative 2, which means we can use the power rule twice. We can use the power rule on this, increase the power by 1, and divide by that new power. Increase the power by 1, and divide by that new power, plus a constant. Uh, one other thing to think about. What would you do for this? Think about it. I think I know. The antiderivative of e to the 3x is going to be something like an e to the 3x. And then I think to myself, what's the derivative of e to the 3x? The derivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x times the derivative of 3x. This is all I need, plus a constant. So the anti-differentiation process just reverses the things we already knew how to do. So I hope that you will take advantage of the questions on the watch page and get yourself some extra practice before we gather. This becomes very important as we look to move forward. I'll see you in class.